it's Adam here. Uh, I don't know if this is in focus or not. I did a few preps. The camera looks like it's off kilter a little bit. Um, and this is in 1080p, not 4K, because I'm using the nicer uh, camera with a lower resolution. Kind of a downfall of using a SLR for recording. Uh, behind me is the bike. I thought I would give it an update because, um, as a lot of you know that have been watching this for a while, I do these uh, per modification videos, and then maybe ha once or twice a year I'll do kind of a general video. The last time I did one of these was in December. I did kind of a future modifications video. I need to rewatch that because I'm not quite sure what I promised myself and what I um, ended up changing. So I need to kind of, you know, do a, a, a fact check on that video and make sure it was actually all accurate. Uh, but the back is behind me. It currently has no wheels on it. The, both wheels are in Colorado. Um, and it has no crash bars and it has no headers, no exhaust. Uh, auxiliary lights and O2 sensors are hanging on the ground. There's no windscreen on it, um, no seat, no luggage grid, no luggage racks. Uh, yeah, it, it is in shambles. So um, I've got a big month ahead of me. So there's a few, there's, now I have kind of a timeline for things. And I was looking back the past two years, so I take photos every day. Uh, the past two years, or three years, and uh, every year on April 1st, um, there's still snow on the ground. So it's, it, you know, it's, it's, okay to ride maybe but you're still going to be hitting your bike with salt and possibly black ice and those kind of things so i'm not yet in a place of riding but now i have this possible deadline of um of maybe going down south for a, a spring trip in which case a lot of my things have been bumped up like today i was going to go change my um license plate for my bike but i was told that uh it's a 60 day turnaround time on plates well i missed that mark because now i'm going to be riding and you know 40 days um, so I, the, the plate will be ready in time so I decided to wait until the end of next year to change the plate over uh, as you know most of you know it says Beamer now I wanted to say something else it's gonna be a surprise I'll leave that for a, a future update 10 months from now um, so now I have this date right so March 24th uh, is theoretically the day that I could possibly be leaving to go down to uh, Robinsonville North Carolina Deals Gap, Asheville, Knoxville, that whole area with the Quebec uh, BMW group. And um, because of that, I'm now having a little minor freak out. So it's the 13th of February, which means I have, you know, a month and uh, a month and a week before this bike needs to be road ready. And um, I'm still at least one week, maybe two weeks away from getting the powder coating stuff back from the guy. Kind of freaking me out a little bit. Uh, my front right turn signal um, is in China being diagnosed by the Dado LED guys in order to um, figure out how Dynamic Motor Rod did it and how they did their great job and not really reverse engineer it but just kind of look at the spec. That won't get back to me in time. The guy confirmed today so he's going to actually go go buy me a new single turn signal from Dynamic Motor Rod uh, to reimburse me for me sending them my turn signal. So that's delayed. I've got a broken plastic uh, housing back here, turn signal housing, that I need to order from Max BMW along with five rotor bolts uh, for the rotor change I'm doing next week. I also have to order, um, there's one more thing I order from them, I think it's the T25s and T30s, random things that I've just misplaced. So I've got uh, about 20 different unique little bolt screw things I'm ordering from Max BMW to get the bike road worthy for about 30 bucks, no big deal. Uh, the used uh, replacement rear rotors on the way. It's a 4.93 millimeter versus mine, which is currently at 5.03, tenth of a millimeter off uh, from stock. So uh, not a huge difference. I'm going to stick with the pads I have and change the bolts and medium lock type them down along with a fresh rotor. I will do a video comparing the uh, used rotor that's supposedly not bent and the current rotor, which is bent, um, just to show you guys the difference between them off the bike. Um, the front wheel was bent, as you saw from a previous video. Woody's Wheels has that for um, um, for 415, including tax. They are going to uh, fix the wheel, relace, and true it. Um, and then I just sent them my rear wheel, which just needs, I hope, lacing and truing. But I had stuck this TKC80 on there myself, so who knows? That might also show some signs of being um, bent. I really can't say for sure until they get it and inspect it. I hope that it's a $200 thing where it's lacing and truing. Uh, if it's not, then um, I don't know. So uh, powder coating is gonna be 506 um, total for everything that's not doing the uh, foot pegs, the front um, axle uh, mounts, or there's one thing I wanted to have in powder coat, and I can't remember what it is right now. 
uh, or the handlebars. I'm going to have those powder coated at some point. I also want to repowder coat the Jesse boxes. They're black, uh, but that will also probably happen next year. Uh, so 500 for that, uh, 100 with shipping for the used rotor, about 30 bucks a max BMW, um, four something for the front wheel to be fixed, uh, 200 for the rear wheel to be fixed with you know roughly $100 shipping for both of those. And then I'm going to have a local shop um, mount and balance my wheels for $75. Uh, they saw my video and said, dude, we need to get you back on the road as soon as possible. Please bring your wheels in and we'll do it for you for 25 off. Uh, we can't watch you do this anymore. <laughs> so I appreciate that. Um, once the powder coating is done, roughly on the February the 15th or 20th, uh, probably 20th, um, I'm going to attempt myself to get the all rider skid plate, the headers uh, installed. Uh, I'm going to try to get the lower crash bars installed. The main reason why is I have... Um, in route to get here Saturday, uh, Clearwater um, Erica and Clearwater Darla auxiliary lights. Um, I spoke to Clearwater today and they are sending me uh, Darla fork lights and Erica upper crash bar lights. The person I'm buying, bought them from used, heavily discounted, it's, it was a fantastic deal I couldn't turn down, um, was the Erica's mounted the crash bar is upper but out, kind of like behind the turns, above and to the right of the turn signals, would totally hit the ground if you dumped the bike. And then he had his Darla's um, mounted as a replacement for the, the stock auxiliary lights on the upper crash bar, so he had unscrewed those. I want to keep the stock aux lights uh, and not throw any codes or anything like that, so I actually am keeping those. So um, And his package also came with a can opener uh, system for CAN bus uh, interface with clear water lights. It also came with uh, amber covers for both the Darla's and the Erica's. Uh, and something else I can't. Oh, and the Billy brake light it came with that as well. So fantastic deal uh, for around the same, well, less than what it would cost to get it new from Denali, a similar system, uh, their D4 2.0 system and DM plus their uh, brake light. So um, uh, from Clearwater, we have the crash bar mounts. They do the upper crash bars, the little inward pieces there. It kind of un almost underneath the fender. That's where the Ericos will go, and the Darlas will go down fork mounted. I'll probably throw amber lights on the Ericas, and then uh, Darlas will be for. Um, I, I really hate. You'll see some of my nighttime videos back in uh, October. I'm leaning around corners. It's pitch black. There's no lights around at all. And I don't know what's around the corner until I actually get upright again and I'm facing down the road. The Darla's are going to allow me to actually see around the corner a little bit. Huge safety issue at night with moose and deer and all kinds of varmint here. I mean, you can come across a broken down truck in the middle of the road without any flashers on in New Hampshire. And uh, you never saw it. You just, you're on it. There it is. So it's going to be great. Um, okay, so what else is uh, happening? I'm trying to go to my mind here. So once powder coating is done, we'll have uh, the rear of the bike here. We're going to have the um, the Jesse luggage uh, uh, reinstalled. Um, uh, I don't know yet. So one thing I didn't do before I went and powder coated everything, I didn't do a test of the Jesse luggage that I bought used. So I've got a, um, a lower uh, luggage plate that Jesse rat, the Jesse top box mounts to. But presumably that luggage plate does hook to the OEM um, GS Adventure uh, luggage grid without a problem. We'll see. Um, and then, of course, getting the Jesse bags mounted up. And then I'm going to take the Jesse bags off. And hopefully, before the trip in March, I'm going to reach out to Jesse uh, Luggage, the company in Arizona, and have them ship me the um, soft luggage mounts, their luggage. The current scenario is that if I am, uh, I commute to work, usually with nothing on the bike at all. If I know I'm going to the grocery store or the hardware store, I'll throw on the hard luggage. If I'm going to a brewery, I'll throw on the hard luggage. Now, if I want to go off-roading and go an overnighter, I've got to take the Jesse luggage off, mount up the one, two, three, four different bolts on each side of the bike with a Moscow Moto plate, and then it takes about half an hour, and then put, hook the Moscow Motos down to the plates um, that way. It works with Jesse luggage just fine with the Moscow Moto adapter plate, but um, it's not very quick. So with the Jesse luggage, Jesse soft luggage plates, I can actually remove the hard backing from the Moscow Moto bags. I can throw out or put into a box the Moscow Moto um, plates themselves, and I can um, put in a box the Moscow Moto uh, exhaust side adapter plate. So roughly, you know, if I had known in November I was going to go Jesse luggage, I would have ordered Moscow Moto bags without the hard inserts, without the luggage grid plate, and without the exhaust adapter plate. Uh, it would have saved me about $200 and 
and then spend that 250 on towards Jesse to get the soft luggage adapter. Now it does give me some flexibility in the long run of having the whole Moscow Moto set up, um, but switching from hard to soft is about a half hour job, both directions, um, on both sides of the bike. So uh, it'll be nice to have that. You know, I hope that I can get that done before the trip. Uh, Billy brake light goes in the back of the bike, which will be fantastic for safety reasons. A uh, nice strobe on diesel. Um, put the tank bag back on. Not going to do any extra wiring up with USB stuff at this time. Uh, not for the March trip. I'll do that before the July trip into uh, Newfoundland. The uh, oh yeah, the other thing Max BMW is I'm missing. A, you know when you when you put this up the um, the battery uh, cover back on the side of the bike. Uh, there's rubber grommets that the, the battery cover slides into. Well, both of those are missing. I don't know where they, they went. So this thing, you hear it? It just flaps around. So if I zip tie it, it's fine, but they're like $2 a piece. I'll just grab those. Uh, Sergeant C, obviously I have that. And uh, one last thing was I had, I went back and forth with All Rider for a long time, and I feel really bad for Lindell over there. I mean, she's been wonderful. It took about three or so different back and forths. Finally, I sent her a video of exactly what I was going through. I had these uh, screw bolts that replace the OEM bolts in the center stand. I can't show you because the bike, if I took out the center stand, would fall onto everything. There's no wheels on it. Um, it there were these uh, AM6 45 millimeter bolts that were supposed to go into that pin, and the threads only go halfway into the pin. So I'm like showing them, like, there's no way I can do this. If I thread this in, I'll have bolts sticking out past where the brake uh, is, uh, brake sh and, and sh shifter is. She finally, after a few uh, weeks of us going back and forth, was like, I just realized you have bolts that we don't use anymore. You have pins that we don't use anymore. And I bought the skid plate used, and um, yeah, it just was a big cluster F. So she sent me the two bolts. They are solid, they're clear all the way through. You just slide the pin right in, and it holds the Alt-Rider skid plate back to the catalytic converter in place. I'm so happy that's behind us. It'd be nice to get uh, some more bags on this thing, and some mirror extenders up here so the double takes get a little further. Um, little small things, but for the most part, uh, my main focus, my main spending is going to be paying for the wheel repairs, the wheel, the tire mounting, the uh, powder coating, possibly some labor at Max BMW to get some things mounted up, um, time getting all the Jesse luggage and Moscow Moto plates synced up, make sure that all works before we go leave the trip. And it's all very time sensitive because every vendor I work with is in California or uh, Arizona or Washington state. So if something's wrong, I have to wait like four to five days to even get the replacement part. So I really need all this done by like March 15th. Um, hopefully get a nice warm day by the middle of March and then go out on the bike and give it a test. Make sure the new rotor works. Do a little bedding with that with the pads. Um, make sure there are no error codes on the engine. Check for exhaust leaks. Um, you know, uh, do an oil change. You know, everything I need to do basically to get prepped for this trip. Um, and then put the bike back inside and then have a full like five days where I can just tweak little small things about like the position of the rocks risers, the position of the sergeant seat, uh, ergonomics, that kind of thing ahead of this trip as opposed to scrambling to get parts in time uh, for this to get wrapped up. Uh, the last thing I'll do is send this bike to the next BMW to do the Gearshift Assist Pro software update and a firmware update to the ECU. And then I'll also have them just give a, a quick look at all these bolts that I've touched from the, the front axle, the rear axle, the brake, uh, the caliper carriers, um, the, the bolts that I use to hook in, especially the left side where I had some cross threading on those Altrider um, bars when I was first playing around with them. You know, basically just give it a whole look over to make sure everything's good. Remove this X head. I did drop the bike when I dropped it without the rear wheel on, landed on the rotor. You guys saw the video in uh, the bloopers. Um, have this X head taken off and inspect the cylinder head cover, make sure everything looks good there. Um, just an overall checkup before I take it for, um, we'll probably do maybe 500 miles in the woods uh, in North Carolina that last week of March with the, with the BMW group. <sighs> long update. <laughs> really long update. Uh, so I guess that's it for now, if we're still recording. Uh, I'll shoot some B-roll so we'll get some stuff in here, but that's, that's it for now. Let me get out of your way so you can see the bike.